everybody hope you're all healthy and safe at home uh, we are moving on to the next section of our fourth module section 18.3 independence of the path so uh, we had discussed uh, uh, the same topic uh, in uh, real integrals and also uh, the main question that is uh, we had seen that if a line integral was independent or uh, it was independent of the path then the integral of uh, that particular function in on whatever path we take from two end points uh, will be the same right so if we have a point a and b and if the function is independent of the path then if the integral is independent of the path then the value on uh, of that integral from a to b along any path that we choose will be the same so now we had uh, dealt about discussed about complex functions and uh, we had discussed about their integration and all so the same question arises in our mind whether this is applicable for co contour integral also that is the concept of path independence uh, whether it is applicable for our contour integral so let's just see uh, actually the answer is yes we are going to deal with that in this section that is it is also uh, the results there are results and theorems regarding the independence of the path so the definition is let z dot and z1 be two points in a domain d a contour integral integral over c f of z d z is said to be independent of the path if its value is the same for all contours c in d with an initial point z dot and a terminal point z1 so this is the definition of path independence that is we have two points in a domain two complex points and uh, if the integral contour integral is said to be independent of the path if whatever contour we are drawing or whatever path we are drawing between z dot and z1 that is with initial point z dot and and, and terminal point z1 the integral value will be the same okay so uh, this is actually uh, it is because of the fact of our cauchy gusser theorem again related to that now uh, we had uh, seen that the cauchy gusser theorem was applied for um, simple uh, closed contours okay but in the end of that section we had also stated that it is applicable for uh just closed contours it need not be simple so if we are uh, you can see figure 18.3.1 there are two points d is our domain and we have two points z dot and z1 okay and our curve is c okay this is the path so if you have to find the integral along this path okay and if the function is uh, independent of the path then whatever path we draw from z dot to z1 the function will the integral will be the same that is the definition of independence of the path so here uh, how this is happening is by applying cauchy gusser theorem in this case if you see we have a curve curve c and we are considering another curve c1 from z dot to z1 okay now this is uh, uh, not a simple curve but it is closed so cauchy gusser theorem is applicable here so what will be the value the sum of these two will be zero if the function is analytic that is a condition that we are keeping in our mind that is if the function is analytic then by cauchy gusser theorem uh, integral over cf of z dz plus integral over minus c1 f of z dz equal to zero now why minus c1 minus c1 because uh, c1 is going from z dot to z1 so minus c1 means it will be from z1 to z dot then only we'll get a closed curve right that is starting from z dot traveling through c reaching at z1 then coming back to z dot by the opposite direction of c1 so if the function is analytic integral over c f of z dz plus integral over minus c1 f of z dz will be zero so from this we can write this as integral over c f of z dz minus of integral over c1 f of z dz equal to 0 so this implies integral over c f of z dz is equal to integral over c1 f of z dz okay so that is uh, the definition of path independence and we have a theorem related to that that is this that uh, the condition for the function that is if the function is analytic in a simple connected domain then the integral will be independent of the path the proof of this theorem is what uh, we discussed just now 
that is by the application of cauchy gustav theorem so the theorem is if the function f is analytic that is important in a simply connected domain then the integral over c contour integral is independent of the path okay so we'll just uh, move on to or uh, look into some example which is given in your textbook related to the same that is how we can find the contour integral with the help of this okay so example one of your textbook we are asked to evaluate integral over c f uh, 2z dz where c is the contour with initial point z equal to minus 1 and terminal point z equal to minus 1 plus i so you can see in the figure 18.3.2 so the c is moving from z dot and reaching z1 so we are asked to evaluate the integral over c okay now let us look at the function f f of z here is f of z is equal to 2z it is a polynomial function it is an entire function so that function is analytic so we can clearly apply the theorem just now which we had stated just now so f of z is 2z which is entire so we can apply uh, theorem 18.3.1 and uh, this function will be the integral sorry not the function the integral over c f of z dz will be independent of the path so whatever path we choose from the point initial point z equal to minus 1 to z equal to minus 1 plus i whatever path it may be the integral will be the same so here what we are doing is can you see the red line that is our c1 that is i am starting from z and again ending at minus 1 plus i so instead of traveling the whole way around i am just going like this okay this is my another path okay now along this path i am going to evaluate this integral so how can i evaluate this integral here we can see that um, z is a complex number it will be of the form x plus i y right here x is clearly minus 1 right x is equal to minus 1 so we will have z is equal to minus 1 plus i y okay then so we know what z is now what do we need we need to know what is dz what is dz dz is i into dy okay so here x is a constant and y is varying from what point from 0 to minus 1 0 to uh, sorry 1 right so there is a variation of y from 0 to 1 and x is a constant so applying all these to the integration so we get integral over c 2 is a dz that's nothing but integral over c 1 2 is a dz because the function is analytic and this is equal to minus 2 into integral 0 to 1 y dy minus 2 i into integral 0 to 1 dy how did we get that that is simple we just applied z is equal to minus 1 plus i y so that is minus 2 minus 2 i y into dz is i into dy so we will get minus 2i plus 2 minus 2i minus 2y into dy okay so the integration is simple uh, integration of y will become uh, how much it will become y square by 2 and 2 and 2 will get cancelled so we will get minus 1 minus 2y so this will be the integral so instead of uh, so evaluating integral uh, of an analytic function becomes much more easier with this uh, theorem that is we can choose a simple path here the path which was given or the contour which was given was a bit complicated so we just used a simple path and evaluated and because of the analysis analyticity of the given function uh, we can uh, easily evaluate this integral okay uh, now uh, we shall move on to the next theorem which is stated in your uh, textbook that is theorem 18.3.2 that is uh, the fundamental theorem we are all familiar with it that is suppose f is continuous in a domain d and capital f is the antiderivative of f now what is an antiderivative antiderivative means capital f dash of z will be equal to f of z okay so if capital f is an antiderivative of uh, small f in d then for any contour c in d with initial point z dot and terminal point z1 integral over c f of z d z is equal to f of z1 minus f of z2 so this is a fundamental theorem uh, which we are very familiar with because uh, we have uh, done the same in case of 
uh, real integrals you know not um, complex ones so uh, we'll just see how uh, the proof of this has come uh, that is also simple only mm, you can see that we will uh, we have to show that integral over c f of z dz is equal to f of z1 minus f of z dot. Now integral over consider z to be the curve z equal to z of t where t varies from a to b. Okay, so integral over c f of z dz will be nothing but integral varying from a to b z will be replaced by z of t f of z of t into dz is z dash of t into dt. Okay, we are just substituting the value of z as z of t and dz is equal to z dash of t into dt. Let us converting into a single variable t. Now, if f is the antiderivative, hmm, capital F is the antiderivative, then f of z of t can be replaced by f dash of z, z of t. Okay, so this will be equal to integral a to b f dash z of t into z dash of t into dt. Now, this is nothing but uh, obtained by applying chain rule on d by dt of f of z of t dt. I hope that is just see if uh, we have to find the derivative of f of z of t with respect to dt. What will we do? First, we will uh, f we will apply derivative on the function f. Then the derivative then we will apply derivative on z. Right. So this is obtained by chain rule. So this is equal to integral a to b d by dt f of z of t dt. Okay. Now, so integral of differential will be will get the function itself that is f of z of t varying from a to b that is f of z of b minus f of z of a which is equal to f of z1 minus f of z dot. So that is a simple proof. Okay. Now we shall see some example related to same. So here we can evaluate the same uh, contour integral which we had seen in the first example that is integral over c 2 z d z okay by using this theorem uh, what will be the antiderivative of 2 z it will be nothing but z square right f of z will be equal to z square so here integral over minus 1 to minus 1 plus i that was what we had to determine 2 z into dz this will be nothing but z square varying from minus 1 to minus 1 plus i that is minus 1 plus i whole square minus of minus 1 square which is equal to minus 1 minus 2 so when we are applying or learning more new new theorems the in valuation of the contour integral is getting much more easier so the same integral we had evaluated in the first example using the concept of independence of power that is choosing a different path other than the contour which was given to us and uh, which was much more simpler and we evaluated the integral now here uh, using the fundamental theorem uh, we can evaluate the contour integrals very easily if we know the antiderivative of the given function. So here f of z is 2z and we know capital F of z will be nothing but z square. Now there is another example related to the same thing that is um, we are asked to evaluate in the global c cos z dz. Now cos z dz with initial point z equal to 0 and terminal point 2 plus i. Now we know the antiderivative of cos z is sin z. So we can simply just evaluate this in a simple manner. Sin z is uh, sin of, so this integral will be equal to sin of 2 plus i minus sin of 0, sin 0 is 0 itself, so that is sin of 2 plus i. Now the evaluation, uh, you can write this in the complex form, like a plus ib if you want to, which we have done in the earlier sections. So that was how we did how we evaluate an integral with the help of the fundamental theorem now there are two uh, important points or important statements that i have uh, i need you guys to keep in your mind uh, with this we will be uh, you know, moving on to the next theorem uh, the first one is if a continuous function f has an antiderivative then the contour integral is independent of the path if a continuous function has an antiderivative, then the contour integral is independent of the path. Now, this, uh, the sufficient condition is as follows. If the function is continuous and the integral is independent of the path, then f has an antiderivative. Okay, this is like if and only if condition. So, keep in mind, function should be continuous and the antiderivative should exist, then the integral will be independent of the path. And if the function is continuous and the integral is independent of the path, then the function will definitely have a 
quanto uh, sorry uh, it will have an anti derivative so now we'll move on to the last theorem of uh, this section that is theorem 18.3.3 that is if f is analytic in a simple connected domain okay then f has an anti derivative in d okay that is always happening that is there exists a function capital f such that f dash of z is equal to f of z for all z and d so the only condition for the existence of anti derivative is that the function must be analytic okay if the function is analytic then clearly it is continuous right so that is uh, and uh, if the derivative exists then uh, the function should be continuous like the differentiability implies continuity so uh, with uh, this concept the necessary condition for our uh, function uh, to have an anti derivative is that the function must be analytic now uh, what we are going to discuss here is one important point that you have to keep in mind that we will see with the help of an example uh, which is given in your textbook that is uh, related to the logarithmic function that is we are asked to evaluate integral over c 1 by z dz along the contour c which is shown in the figure okay this contour is like x is equal to 3 to y is equal to 2y so this is the contour which is given to us okay now if we are uh, considering the domain to be the upper half plane i mean the uh, only the portion where the real part and the imaginary part are positive okay excluding zero now keep in mind excluding zero okay suppose that d is a simply connected domain defined by x is equal to real part of z greater than zero and y is the imaginary part of z greater than zero so the blue shaded portion is a region or it's a domain okay that is the domain now remember we have eval or we have removed the axis right so the point zero is not here so in this case we can say that the function 1 by z is analytic everywhere right yeah because if z was z equal to zero is a point in the given domain then in that case this function is not analytic and we won't be able to use our fundamental theorem here we know that log z is the antiderivative of 1 by z right so since the domain does not contain the point zero we can evaluate this integral like 3 to 2y 1 by z dz is nothing but log z varying from 3 to 2y that is log of 2y minus log of 3 and we know how to write log of 2y and log of 3 in the given particular form okay uh, so uh, the thing that you have to keep in mind is you have to check whether the given function is analytic in the given domain or not okay so suppose our domain was uh, like the upper half plane so the whole portion above this including the x-axis then in that case we cannot apply the fundamental theorem because the function given to us is not analytic right if the function is analytic then the antiderivative will definitely exist over there otherwise that is not possible so uh, when we are given the function 1 by z directly we know the derivative antiderivative is log z but that is uh, we must keep in mind the domain uh, that which we have to check whether the function is analytic in the given domain and then you must go on to the antiderivative concept now in the previous section we had seen that this integral over c 1 by z dz is nothing but 2 pi i okay uh, so just uh, keep that particular point in your mind so these and this um, this is the theorem that we had discussed right now that is the function is analytic then the antiderivative exists so in this section basically we have discussed three theorems uh, regarding the independence of the path and uh, uh, the uh, concept about that is choosing the antiderivative fundamental theorem we had discussed about fundamental theorem and uh, the last theorem was about the existence of the antiderivative that the function must be analytic and simply connected to me so these are the theorems and we had uh, that we had discussed in today's session so that's it for today's session thank you stay home and stay safe